Miami Mayor Francis Suarez is the latest person to join the Republican presidential field. He may not be a household name across the country, but he is well known here in South Florida. Suarez is the first mayor of Miami to be born in the city of Miami. His father also served as mayor, also of Miami, and he also served as a Miami-Dade County Commissioner. With us now for his first MSNBC interview since declaring his candidacy, Miami Mayor and Republican presidential candidate Francis Suarez. Mayor, thank you for being with us this morning. This is an extremely crowded race you're joining. You're the third Floridian to announce a run. Why are you running for president? Well, because I think my candidacy is different. I think I look different. I think I sound different. I think I can appeal to a different set of Americans. And my goal is to unify this country and create an aspirational, positive vision for the future of this country based on a track record of success. I don't think there's any other candidate that's uh, speaking that sort of tone and that language. And unfortunately, we've gotten into a toxic, divisive uh, conversation in our country. I want to change the conversation. I want to talk to different people. I want to motivate young voters who went to 26 percent for Joe Biden in 2020. I want to talk to Hispanics who are increasingly becoming Republicans because they've been termed Latinx or been told that they're as unique as San Antonio tacos, which obviously doesn't resonate with Hispanics. I want to reconnect with suburban women uh, across the country and make sure that they feel welcome into this party. So uh, I think that there are, are definitely uh, different subpopulations of this country that I can communicate with, connect with, to not only win the 2024 election, but frankly, to win generations of elections going forward. So, Mayor, you have acknowledged that you did not vote for Trump in 2016 or 2020. You also said that you did not vote for DeSantis in 2018. Why are you running as a, a Republican? Listen, I've been a Republican since I was 18 years old. Uh, I believe in limited government. I, be I believe in a strong national defense. Uh, I believe in a lot of the values of the Republican Party. Um, and the reason why I'm running as a Republican is because I believe in those values. Listen, in the city of Miami, we reduced taxes to the lowest level in history, and we saw double-digit growth. We upfunded our police, not defunded our police, and we had the lowest per capita homicide rate since 1964. This year, we're 40% below that number. We leaned into American innovation, and we are number one in wage growth, and we have the lowest unemployment. I believe that can be scaled, and I believe that my parents who were exiled from their country of birth, Cuba, at 12 and 7, fleeing a leader who said, give me all your property, give me all your business, and don't worry, we'll make everybody equal. And he did. He made e everybody equally poor and equally miserable. That is not fundamentally American. We need to recapture our American spirit. It has to be positive, it has to be aspirational, and it has to be future-looking. So, Mayor, let's talk immigration, for example. Florida Governor Ron DeSantis recently signed a sweeping bill targeting undocumented immigrants in the Sunshine State. The law goes into effect on the 1st of July. What's your plan and what's your reaction to that? My plan is, is to solve the problem. Uh, I think mayors uh, don't have the luxury of blaming other people. They don't have the luxury of, in some cases, making the problem worse and harder for small businesses. We've got to solve the problem. And I think solving the problem begins first at the border. Obviously, we had 7 million illegal border crossings since cast and release and the undoing of Title 42. That obviously has to be reversed. Uh, and so we have to secure our border, which, by the way, is not only a human trafficking risk, but it's also a fentanyl uh, 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 vulnerability where 80 to 90,000 Americans, uh, which is the the equivalency of a 747 crashing every single day uh, are, are dying as a result of fentanyl coming in through our border. Uh, I think we have to depower China, uh, which is a big issue. We're sending tri China a trillion dollars of our wealth annually, and they're using it to subvert us in our hemisphere. We do not have a hemispheric strategy uh, to prevent poverty in our hemisphere, which creates immigration pressure. Number three, I think we have to look at immigration as a positive. You know, one of the things we have in, in China that's different uh, uh, from, uh, or that's the same from our countries, we both have declining birth rates. The difference is nobody wants to go to China. Everybody wants to come to the U.S. And we're not having a coherent conversation about legal immigration and what it should be indexed to. It should be indexed to unemployment. It should be indexed to that declining birth rate. And it should be in the best interest of Americans. And that could mean significantly increasing legal immigration, which also helps solve the problem. And then, of course, the so hardest the... problem, I think, is the, yeah, the, the undocumented that we have. I was going to say the undocumented is probably where you're going to go. You know, those who are 
are here. We, I think, all accept as a country that you can't just teleport them out of our country, right? And so uh, I think as a Hispanic Republican president, it gives you a certain ability to have that conversation in a constructive way so that we determine what kind of status they receive, so that we know where they are, so that we know that they're uh, paying taxes and are uh, participating in our society, so that they don't have to necessarily be in the shadows and small businesses can count on them um, uh, to work for them. So I think that is the basis of a coherent policy. And I think being a Hispanic Republican president would help give me a tremendous amount of credibility to solve this problem. And um, on another issue, the Miami Herald is reporting that you're under investigation by the Miami-Dade Commission on Ethics and Public Trust over allegations you took payments from a developer to help fast track a multi-million dollar real estate project. Did you? Of course not, uh, Jose. You've known me for a long time. You've known my family for a long time. We've distinguished ourselves by being ethical and transparent. Throughout my entire public sector career, I've, I've been a working a, a, a public sector official. Every single mayor, uh, with the exception of three in our county, 31 of them work in the private sector. And of course, we have to do it ethically and honorably. I've never used my public position to benefit any private party. That's not going to happen. This is a well-timed a smear campaign by a, a, a local paper that uh, knew that I was going announce my candidacy for president, and, and my values offend them. The fact that I'm a young, conservative Hispanic from a big city, I mean, that's like a quadruple whammy uh, for the Miami Herald uh, in terms of the threat that I pose to the Democratic Party. So you did not? No, no, no under no circumstances, Jose. As someone who is uh, mayor, you know this, being indicted as former President Trump here in South Florida. I if you were president, would you pardon Donald Trump? Look, I think Americans are bewildered by this whole situation. It's hard to understand how anyone uh, post a, a, an elected official or presidency can mishandle or handle classified uh, information. Uh, you know, the, the president is innocent until proven guilty. He's got to respond to a jury of his peers. Uh, and so that process has to play out before any sort of a discussion on pardons can happen. But I will say this. If I became president of the United States, I think the pardon power, one of the possible reasons for using the pardon power is to heal the country. So, uh, you know, who knows what will happen? Uh, he's innocent until proven guilty. He has not been proven guilty. But certainly, if I became president, one thing I would look at uh, as president is using the pardon power to heal the country. And that, by the way, doesn't go for one party. It goes for both parties.